off uh, Vicky over you know top five ranked guy. Uh, but when you were standing there, were you at all worried about the decision? When they said all three cars unanimous, just because I felt I lost the first round. I, I will give Aaliyah that. He definitely took it to me in the first round. He had a really good game plan. He caught me with my head going off the wrong way. So when they say a winner about all three judges say the same thing, I, my heart just dropped. You know, I thought for sure I won the second and third. But when they said I won the first, second, and third, that was definitely a great feeling. That motherfucker kick hard. Excuse my language, mama. I also forgot every time I cuss, my mom get mad at me. But um, yeah, he kicks hard. You know those leg kicks. And he wasn't kicking the leg. Like you no, know, he's doing those, those calf kicks you hear about. And that was my first time ever getting calf kicked. And I don't want to get calf kicked again. Put it that way. Dominic said in commentary after you took two of those, he said if he takes one more, I don't think he can move his leg. Did you feel that like you were just maybe one good kick away from like? No. If you saw my fight with Gian Vellante, you would have saw I took 31 leg kicks and kept going all the way until I got knocked out with 45 seconds left. I'm the type of, no matter if I'm hurt, you're going to have to kill me. I'm not going to stop for an injury. You know, I would have faked it until I made it. And, you know, if he would have got me, that would have been it. But it wouldn't have been because of my le leg. He would have never knew I was hurt from that. And he hit you with the bomb. I mean, he knocked out your, your mouth guard, it looks like, as well. I mean, where were you any of those shots? Or, you know, maybe she starts a the uppercut, the uppercut, when he knocked my mouth, he's like, he did catch me. Caught me on my chin and caught my mouth, like my teeth, and it shattered my chin. But my mouth went flop, mouthpiece went. It definitely, it rocked me a little bit. But once I got up, backed up, and he had gave me space, I was able to clear up and try to find my mouth guard. So what was the change between the first and second round? Because it, it truly seemed like a, a very noticeable momentum shift. Because that uppercut, you know, I realized he was waiting for me to take my head off. Everything he was throwing was a rear uppercut with the right hand. He was just going rear uppercut or a rear short hook trying to catch my head because he knows I shoot with my head to the right, which is great for him and his coach. He figured it out. He stopped my shots that way. And he came with uppercuts and hooks. I don't know why I can't give these hiccups. I'm sorry. But um, when I realized that he was catching that, it was like no more head off. You know, we just got to stand and bang. And hopefully if I get the takedown, it's going to be because he over punches and I love a change and get underneath him. You would think I at least go number five, but we never know. Last time I beat the number three ranked guy and they put me in six. Now I'm ranked 10th and I haven't even lost, you know? It's kind of weird. They don't respect me. I guess it's because I'm not knocking guys out, I'm not choking guys out, whatever it is, but I'm winning. You say you they don't I don't know who's in charge of the rankings, but whoever's in charge of the ranking, y'all don't respect me. You know, whether it's a UFC, whether it's some no Joes, some average Joes, whatever it is. If it's you guys, whoever, if one of you here, hey, you can keep dissing me. I'm still here. 13 fights deep in four years. I got just as many. I have, the only person I have more fights than me in the 205 division is John Jones and OSP. And everybody else has been in the UFC for eight and seven years, and I've only been here four years, and I got 13 fights. I'm now nine and four. I've never turned down a fight. They called me on two weeks notice to fight Jan Blockwich, I took that. They called me on a week notice to fight Fabio Maldonado on my third fight. I took that. Anytime my manager called me, I say, send me a contract. You know, and they keep dogging me out because I'm not getting finishes. That's okay. And the people say, oh, Corey is two and two in his last four fights or whatever. Corey also fought four times in the last year when, when it was the who going to get the title shot. Gustafson fought four times in the last five years. You know, people don't think about that stuff. I got 14 or 13 fights now in four years. These guys have been fighting seven years and don't have that many fights. You know, I'm fighting consistently. I'm in the gym at all times. If Dana White called me when I healed up and said, yo, it's an opportunity. If my son wasn't being born, I didn't have to be there, I would be there. But they don't respect that. You know, they just see the losses. It's a bunch of casual fans running their mouth on Twitter and making it say, oh, Corey going to get stumped out. Oh, the TV is going to be too much for Corey. Whoever takes shares is going to be too much for Corey. They're going to knock him out. Yeah, I've been knocked out three times. That's okay. But guess what? I'm out there. What are you doing? I'm going to show up every time. What are you doing? If I came to your house right now and said, square up, are you going to step outside or are you going to close the door? Because I know one thing. You ever call my name, I'm going to be there. I'm like the candy man. You saved me three times, I'm popping up. Let's get it. So never mind what they say about you. Where do you see yourself in, in, the, in the division? What should be next for before you I see myself in the top three. I beat the number three ranked guy, right? Glover Texera was on his dominant tear. You know, only person that had beat him was Gus, who was fighting for the title tonight. Why am I not up there in title contention? He finished him in the fourth or the fifth round. You know, I dominated him for three rounds. It wasn't even close. I never was even hurt in that fight. So why am I like it? Why I don't, don't Corey get the respect that Glover and all these guys get? Because Gustin had one of the best fights with John Jones. It is what it is. Like I told my wife, I can't fight the people that control the rankings and my opponents. I can only worry about us and getting this fight.
The only thing it affected is it messed up one of my weight cut workouts. You know, I was scheduled to be in the PI from 8 to 9 or something like that. They told us ahead of time, schedule your time in the PI as soon as you can. It's going to be first come, first serve, you know, like it always does. So I did that a weeks ahead. Well, it's time for me to go. I get a call from the PI saying, I'm Corey John Jones just called and said he want to come in at 8.30, so you're not allowed in the building. What kind of bullshit is that? We're all UFC fighters, right? Well, you can come in. You can work in the cardio room, but you can't go upstairs. Well, I need the ring. I need to work out. I got a fight coming up, too. And I, I, I'm the type. I do not curse at other adults, you know. I don't go off on anybody. I'm pretty cool, calm, collected. But that was the first time in my career I've ever went off on a UFC employee. And my wife was very upset with me. But that's okay. it, it bothered me that they treated me like that, you know. I've, yes, I had an I did everything like we we're supposed to. Weigh in, they say first come, first serve. I got down there. I'm on my way to the scale. John Jones is coming in the building. Guess what? Who's on the scale first? John Jones. How does that work? First come, first serve. I don't like the fact, like I said, we're all equal. We put our pants on the same way. I put my pants on the same way as you. Only thing that's different between me and you is I'm a fighter, you're a reporter. We made the same way. You know, my heart might be a little different, your mind be, might be smarter. But I don't like the fact that people put one person on the pedestal. You know? Which game was that earlier this week? This is in Vegas, before we left Vegas. I was like Wednesday or whatever. Okay. You know, I'm having, I'm I'm strict to a schedule. My training schedule, if I got something set, that's the way I am. I tell my coaches, my wife, no. You come to my house every day, I got three bags. I train three times a day, set up at the door, ready to go. My meals, my shakes, everything ready to go. And they did that, it kind of threw me off. I don't like being the person that's like in the blind trying to figure out what's next. I like to have a schedule set. And the fact they did that, it's kind of, that let me know, like, they really don't, if you're not one of these top guys selling tickets, it really doesn't matter. You know, you, you whatever happens, and like I said, I can't do nothing about it. I told my wife, no matter how much I bitch, no matter how much I'm on, what I say, it's not gonna change. Unless I go out there and beat John Jones and I'm that dominant guy, it really not gonna change. So my opinion really doesn't matter, but I'm the type, I'm gonna vocalize what I feel. If I get punished for it, if they cut me, if something happens, I get penalized and Dana White's upset, my manager's mad, whatever, it is what it is. But I know at the end of the day, Corey said what he was gonna say. I'm not gonna bite my tongue and I'm not gonna speak what somebody want me to say because that's not how I was raised. My parents told me, you say what's right, you do what's right, and you say what you feel. Never bite your tongue if you feel something's wrong. I'm not gonna bite my tongue.